Come here, Fezzy. You can come be online. What's up, guys? It's your girl, Zeta Lisa, and I'm here with another NYX vlog. Sorry I'm running late. Um, I was having some technical difficulties with Instagram signing me on and off. I don't know what's going on. I guess they don't want me to talk NYX, probably because the sentiment across the world is that the NYX suck. Mm -hmm. My husband and I <laughs> were just having that conversation. Um... I'm so excited to be on here tonight. Welcome everybody who just jumped on. Um, we talking all things Knicks. There's some exciting, exciting Knicks news. So I hope um, that you guys are ready. Let me just show you my boy. My boy is here. He's biting everybody, guys. What do you do for your pup who is biting everything? Look, look. Like every time he, and it's like, it hurts. He kind of understands the no face thing because I like had to let him know. <laughs> but like he'll just be biting hard. He, they're at that like phase. Hey, girl, print official thanks. Yes, he's so cute. You just want to eat him. But then it's like, ah, his bites hurt. So he's, he's teething. Look at this face though. Look at this face. So cute. All right. <clears throat> Say hi to the Nick fans. Say hi, Fezzy Bezzy. Okay. He's getting big, y'all. I'm about to have me a big grown ass dog real soon. Um, so I'm super, super, super excited for tonight. I'm not even excited because of the Super Bowl because I know nothing about football. I'm a girl who knows nothing. I used to try to kind of learn some football stuff just to kind of, you know, um, vibe with my dad and stuff, but. It's just like I you, I can't even tell you who's on tonight. Wait, I think I I think I came across it when I was doing some of my basketball research. So it looks like San Francisco versus the Buccaneers. I think that's right. I don't know who's winning. I don't know what's going on. I know nothing football, but um I love all sports. I have a respect for all sports because I know how competitive it is to play any sport. So I feel like I have a respect for any type of sport. When I was young and obnoxious, if it wasn't basketball, then I wasn't like into it. But now like I understand any athlete has a conditioning process. They have um, a dedication, a work ethic. So for me, I respect all sports. I even respect golf. And I'd be straight falling asleep during golf. But hey, I respect it. I know that there's a science to it. So I hope you guys is doing good tonight. Um... If you guys haven't checked out the my podcast, the interview last night that I had with Ithakana, he is a activist in his community. He's a teacher. He's a poet. He's a rapper. Um, Dapper Dan just recently mentioned him. And he is a super dope individual. I was interviewing him last night on my podcast, mamascocktailhour.com. I'm sorry, Mama's Cocktail Hour on Instagram. Um... I was interviewing him and the interview was just amazing. He even spit like a poem on the interview. So dope. If you haven't checked it out, check it out after. If you guys haven't subscribed to my Mama's Cocktail Hour page, my podcast page, please check it out. It's super dope. It's women um, of all ages coming together, having transparent conversations, being real, having conversations that... Yeah, sometimes may fall into the sex realm, may may um may kind of fall into the um the deep realm, but I feel like my platform or, or um my podcast is more of a platform to have real conversations with individuals. Like I don't think that I was really solely trying to focus on the persona of Ithakana. We were really focusing on the man because at the end of the day, any person that you admire, a LeBron James, um a Damian Lillard, um, a Kyrie Irving, whoever it is that you think is dope in sports, that person at the end of the day is still a man and still deals with issues and that you yourself will deal with, any normal person would deal with. And I think that's what my platform is about. Uh, Mama's Cocktail Hour is about having dope, real conversations with individuals versus like, you know, you go, you go on to a podcast like Lip Service and they talk in all things sex. Um, yeah, sex may get thrown into the mix. We haven't really had, um, a conversation with a man about sex on that platform or what was his thoughts. Um, yesterday with the interview with Ithakana, we touched briefly on intimacy and it's just 
all around dope. Check it out. I won't run your mouth here. I know that this is strictly for basketball. <laughs> But I just wanted to, um, I was super excited about the interview, so I just wanted to share it with you guys um, because, uh, you know, it's something I'm, I'm proud of. So I know you guys all have things that you're proud of too and you throw it on your platform, so that's super dope. And now we're going to be diving into all Knicks because I will run my mouth forever. For real. Um, so how's everybody doing? How's the snow out there? I haven't looked outside. I haven't went outside. I have been all day, like in my pajamas, in my little workout wear, not working out. Cause you know girls do that, right? You put on workout wear, but you ain't working out. It's just a look, it's a vibe. And if you a girl, you get it. You get the vibe. All right guys, let's see what's going on. So um, I was just looking at some of the Eastern Standard Conferences where people were, were, um, were at. I think it's interesting just for me to kind of look at it a couple of times throughout the season. And we got Philly um, are, um, is basically the first seed in the East with 17 wins and 7 losses. Shout out to all my Philly fans. I got a lot of Philly fans out there. Uh, so shout out to Philly for being number one in the East. I can't hate on that. Um, I think that's dope. Uh, the Bucks are number two with 15 wins and 8 losses. And we got Brooklyn. At number three with 14 wins and 11 losses. So um, we were talking about Brooklyn just recently and about the whole dynamic with James Harden and whether or not he was going to stop and be a team player versus a selfish player. Um, it looks like they're number three, but I, I don't really look at the... I don't look at that and kind of take it to heart because I feel like at any point a team can like progress. Look at the Clippers when they kind of work their way up to being a playoff team. So I, I I take this with a grain of salt because you never know when a player can spark or when something dope can happen and then it changes the whole dynamic and all of a sudden there's a player that's on a hot streak. Um, remember when the Knicks had Linsanity and it was crazy? Um, shit like that can happen. So things can switch in, in, a, in a moment's time. Um, did anybody just catch the Laker game? The Lakers played the Pistons. And LeBron hit two clutch three-pointers in double overtime. He was definitely feeling himself 100%. He was, he was looking like the, the old LeBron when he was on the Cavs. Like, that's what I saw in that moment. So, shout out to LeBron. I think that's dope. I think it's dope for him to kind of have those moments and still have those big moments. Um, I'm sure it probably still does that for him. Or maybe it doesn't. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that once you've already made it to a LeBron status that no moments are like that are going to be special? I mean, I think every moment like that is special. Um, you know, when you're the last person that the per like who took the shot, the winning shot. I know I, I've definitely been in predicaments where I was like, either I got that rebound or I hustled for that play or I got on the ball. I got on the floor and I was fighting for the ball and I came up and I was like, yes, I did this. And I didn't really do much. <laughs> I just got to be real. But you know what? You know what I tell my son? I tell my son all the time, like, yo, I always respect the players. And guys, let me know if you feel the same way. I always respect the players that were, like, about the hustle. Like, yeah, the ones that score points are good. Yeah, the ones who have the 30-point games. But for me, it's all about the hustle. Like, if you able to go on the floor and grapple for that ball, you able, you able to fight for every rebound, I respect that more than a guy who, sco who scores 30 or 40 points a game. Because you know what? I want to say that at 34, 30 or 40 points a game is not going to be consistent, but your hustle is always consistent. So shout out to my man, Anthony Mason. RIP, man. He was a, he was a hustle player. He would hustle. People were scared to come down the middle, the old Knicks. Oh, God, I could be daydreaming forever, guys, on the old Knicks, like, seriously. Um, but, yeah, I really respect a person who hustles. So, and you know who's kind of hustling right now in the Knicks? Mitchell Robinson. I remember when he first came into the league and he was looking a little fragile. Now he got some muscles. He's looking big. He's looking strong. He's hustling. What do you guys think about my man Mitch? I think he's doing, um, I think he's doing a good job. I really do. I like him. I think that he's, gonna, he's just going to grow into a stronger player. You watch. Absolutely. Um, all right, so what we got going on? So this week, we played a couple of games. 
We beat the Blazers and Damian Lillard was looking sad. And I know that, I know that face. That face was like, did we just lose to the Knicks? He was so disappointed in his team. It was all over his his face. He wasn't shooting well. Um, he was making a lot of bricks. No disrespect to my man Damian Lillard. Because I think he's super dope. But he was he was shooting a lot of bricks in, um, in the game tonight against the Knicks. Or I'm sorry, that was yesterday. Today we played the Heat. But he was showing, he was shooting a lot of bricks. He was off. I don't know where CJ McCollum was. He wasn't there. Or if he was there, he wasn't shooting. So I didn't see him. So I don't know what's going on with the Blazers. Their defense looked a little off. Anyways, the Knicks took advantage and we won that game. And we won it 99 to 110. Today, we played the Heat and I was extremely disappointed in this game. So I don't even want to talk about it. It's one of those things. I don't want to talk about it. They should have won this game. It's typical Knicks shit. They're up. Then the other team comes back. And then, and then that's it. They lost the game. So I was super disappointed in the Knicks with today's game. We ended up losing 103 to 109. I was having one of my spastic moments when I start like throwing pillows and stuff. And yeah, and if you guys want to see my game reactions, let me know. I have my son record it. Sometimes it gets it gets a little graphic though. So I don't think I want to put myself out there like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna think I'm different types of level of crazy. So I don't know. I I I I need to ease into that because I want y'all to keep coming back. I want to keep coming back to talk all things Nick, Knicks. And I feel like if I throw my, my game reactions in there, y'all might be turned off. Y'all might be like, yeah, I'm not watching her no more. She's certified crazy. So I guess we'll hold off on that for future. All right. So who's ready to talk about the new trade that just came into the Knicks three hours ago that I am super, super excited about? Are you guys ready? Um, for all the people who are, um, not happy about this trade, I am extremely happy. And let me tell you why. First off, you need to put some respect on this man's name that I'm about to name that's coming over to the Knicks. And if you do not put respect on his name, you are a certified hater. And I've already told this to one person. That's my husband. He, <laughs> he knows he, I was like, yo, if you're hating on this person that's coming to the Knicks, stop. You need to put some respect on this man's name. Okay, you guys ready? Derek Rose is coming to the Knicks. Now, I am so excited about this because Derek Rose is what I was just talking about, guys. He is a hustle player. Does anybody remember when he had his um his 50 point game? His 50 point game was against the Jazz. It was his career high game. He was killing it. There were so many celebrities um kind of uh tweeting about him, talking about him because he had that whole um he tore his ACL in let me see here. I just want to I got to come with the facts, guys. He tore his he tore his ACL in 2012, so he didn't play for um, the whole year of, of 2012. So he wasn't playing. So he came. I think he came back in 2013, and then he was traded because he was playing on the Chicago Bulls team. And it looks like Tom Tiboro, the Knicks' current coach, was coaching him, and he got drafted. I mean, drafted. You heard me. He got traded to the Knicks um 2016 to 2017 so he was in the Knicks season he was on the Knicks team for one season and I don't know if you guys remember when he did that whole like uh it was kind of like a documentary like a quick documentary on his life when you saw like he was from Chicago born in Chicago and Chicago was the only place he got drafted in 2008 to Chicago so Chicago was the only place that he had played for for a couple of years so I guess it kind of went through his journey of having to transition from Chicago the only place that he's ever known to then New York and um he was like crying and sad and it was fucked up because I was like yo is he crying and sad because he's going to the Knicks <laughs> that's what didn't sit right with me I was like yo he's really upset like you saw him in the documentary like he was on the phone with his agent he was like really emotional about it he was crying and I was like yo he's crying because he's going to the Knicks like this, 
this is next level shit. But no, seriously, I think he was crying because it was like him knowing him him knowing um that he had to leave the only place that he's ever been in for so many years. And a lot of players kind of deal with that early on, like getting traded here and there and moving from one place to another. And I think that was like his first real trade and it was emotional for him. But I, I thought it was so dope that they documented that because I think it, it gave me a different perspective to players. We were actually talking about that last week where we were talking about how um, it's really hard for players to transition and move from a team that they're comfortable with, a dynamic that they're comfortable with, to something brand new. So, you know, I I... I saw that with that documentary, the Derrick Rose uh, documentary. If you guys don't want to, if you guys want to check it out, I'm sure it's on YouTube. You guys can check it out. And it was, it was just crazy because he got the call. He was going to the Knicks and he was like devastated. He was like crying. Um, that broke my heart for so many reasons, biased reasons, of course, because you know I'm a Knicks fan. But um, either way, Derrick Rose. Let's just go through some some things right now. Um, he's a, he has agreed to a trade with the Knicks. They traded, uh, Dennis Smith Jr. for him and a 2021 second round pick, um, via Charlotte. So, um, that's what we traded for. We gave them, um, Dennis Smith Jr. I don't know if you guys know, last week I told you that Dennis Smith Jr. had requested to play, um, in the G League. And I think the Knicks had considered it because he's been sitting on the banca a lot. He's been on the bench. Yes, he's been on the bench a lot. So he, I think he requested to go to the G League just so he can keep playing. And it looks like he's now been traded. So it looks like Dennis Smith Jr. is going to be going to the Pistons. Um, so some of the things that's exciting about this is that Derrick Rose already has a um, connection with Tom Tiborow, our coach. Um, they were both playing together when Tom Tiborow was coaching the Bulls. So they already have a dynamic. And I think one thing that Derrick Rose did say was that he had a relationship with Tom Tiburo, a very close relationship. And when after he got the ACL, that Tom Tiburo knew he was going to come back because there was a lot of speculation. There was a lot of people talking a whole bunch of crap in the media saying that he was never going to come back from that. Something like an ACL is so hard for you to recover from. So there was a lot of speculation there, but um, he proved them wrong. When he scored that 50-point game against the Utah um, Jazz. So, every, I thought that was so dope. It was like that moment for him where he was like, bam. Like, you know, girls, when you were bullied when you were younger and by these, like, mean girls and all of a sudden, like, you walk past them and now you're confident and now you're dope and you're like, Psh, girl, bye. Like, it was that moment for Derrick Rose. You see, I'm putting it in, in, a, in a female's perspective. Like, when he scored that 50 points... He was shitting on everybody. He was shitting on LeBron. He was shitting on Damian. He was shitting on everybody. He was like, yo, look, I'm still here. So what I am hoping is that he does that for the Knicks. The Knicks are in dire need of a point guard, a real point guard. I'm not talking about wasting our time on point guards who are some time -ish. I, you know, I, we need one that's going to be all the time-ish. Not some time-ish. We need a... a a point guard who can see the whole perimeter. We need a point guard who can drive, who can pass, who um, who knows when to pass, who knows when to drive, right? A lot of point guards don't know that. I feel like, like for instance, I'm, I'm having a problem with Austin Rivers because I think he's like sometime-ish. And I understand that people have bad games, but um, I think that he sometimes he's, he's, a, he's afraid to shoot because maybe he thinks his shot is off or he's not confident with it. And it's just, it's all over the place. You know, I've, I also have my, my own issues with Randall bringing up the ball randomly. Like, you're not, you're not a point guard and you can't dribble Randall. So why are you bringing up the ball? It's bad enough when they give you the ball at three point and you can't dribble down. So you're having some problems with the stutter step or the two step or the, the pivot foot. Like, what's wrong with you, brother? You in the NBA, you should have got this down by now. My four-year-old could get down the pivot. And he, it's just because he... He's weak. He can't dribble with both hands. So as players, you know that 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 can be a big thing. I struggle with that. I'll keep it 100% funky. I could not dribble. And that was something that I wish that if I could go back and kind of bring it and, and change everything, it would be like, yo, focus more on my craft. Because I was a big girl, naturally, I thought my height was going to get me somewhere. And it got me, 
it, it no it did get me where and i was also tough right so it's like i would I, like i said i would go for those hustles i would get every rebound i'd be hustling on the floor fighting for the ball so i think my coaches respect the hustle and i wasn't afraid to kind of get fouled and go back up and do stuff like that but my dribbling was trash so i know how essential it was for um for me to develop that but i was just i wasn't focused there was too many things i was too young you know, boys come into the mix and all of that. So I wasn't focused. But if I can go back now, that's something that I would have wanted to per perfect because it's so important. It, it it has so much to do with confidence when you're playing basketball because if you're not confident in your dribble, you can't get to the hoop. And that's, I feel like, Randall's biggest problem is that sometimes his spin move works and other times it doesn't because everybody, a smart player is going to... Um, a smart player is going to pick that up and just know your move. And then that's it. He's going to put you on lock and you're not going to be able to do that no more. So, um, that's, that's what ha happens to Randall. And they also double him and he can't break that. He can't dribble. So he can't dribble past that. So problems one, two, and three. But anyways, going back to my man, Derek Rose, I am so, so excited about this. Um, Maybe this is maybe this is the change we need. Maybe this is what's going to put it over. I don't know. That's just my opinion. It's wishful thinking. Um, it looks like he's going to be on his way over to the Knicks soon. I don't know how soon. It just The news just came in uh, three hours ago. I was going to try to get the info when he's coming over. But any which way. He'll be coming over soon. We'll be seeing how that dynamic changes. Who Tom Timberow is going to start. Right now he's going through. Um, quickly has been bringing up the ball. That's our rookie. He's been bringing up the ball. Um, Austin Rivers has been bringing up the ball. And they've been kind of interchanging between um, point guards. Because they can't find a steady point guard. So my thought is this. Someone like Derrick Rose comes to the Knicks. A steady point guard. Someone who was averaging 18 points in 2019. Yeah, because I don't think he played 2020 during COVID. I think he sat I don't. I think he sat out. But any which way, he was scoring 18 points in 2019. He was averaging that. So if we can have a dude like that come and just be a strong point guard, someone who's able to see the whole court, someone who's able to initiate the plays, like I think that's a start a starting point for us guys. Just a starting point. I'm not going crazy. I'm not saying we're going to make it to the damn playoffs, although I wish that. Um, but I'm just saying, like, it's a starting point. It's going to be a um, it's gonna be a fun time to kind of see that di dynamic, see them start to build, because I think we're doing great with R.J. Barrett um, quickly. We got Mitchell getting getting tough down there. Um, there's so many there's so many guys that are, like, coming around the corner. So I'm excited to see what's going to happen, all things Knicks. I will keep you guys posted um, on all things basketball, Knicks. Um, let me know if there's anything you guys want to talk about. I'm happy to even talk not Knicks. Um, if we want to kind of do something thereafter where I just talk, let me know. Give me your feedback. It's good for me to know what you guys want to listen to because um, that's important too. And I love to come on here every Sunday and talk with you guys. So let me know. Hit me up in a DM. Let me know what you think, what you like, what you don't like. I've got a couple of people hit me up with, why are you talking Knicks? You got to talk Philly. You got to talk this. And I think that's dope. It's, it's cool to connect with people on a different level and just have this conversation. So thank you for coming on here. I enjoy it every Sunday. And up until next Sunday... Keep checking out my page, Zeta Lisa. I have some dope stuff going on. I got some dope stuff in my podcast going on at Mama's Cocktail Hour. So if you haven't switched over and checked that out, please do. I'll be totally humbled by it. I appreciate all the love and the support. It's I'm like beginning my journey. I'm coming out. I'm doing all things that I love and sports is one of them. So I have to share it with you guys. So have a dope, dope night. And I'll speak to you guys next week. And hopefully we could get some games in where Derrick Rose is playing. And I could come back and either be super disappointed or be super excited. So keep tuning in and watch me next week. Have a good week, guys. Bye.